Well, we're finally here. It's been a long road and I want to thank everyone for their patience on this journey. We've broken down the entire story and a good deal of these story relevant extras. Now it's time to wrap things up. We'll start by looking at a couple things I missed or got objectively wrong. I think the most obvious example is my interpretation of Buck and Locke's exchange prior to the Meridian levels. You're not the only one here because of him. I interpreted this as a reference as to why Locke and Buck became Spartan Force, but as many pointed out, this is more likely a reference to the Chief saving the galaxy on, you know, a couple occasions. I still find the line to be stupid, but, you know, for different reasons now. Something else commenters pointed out was how the fight with the Chief could have been improved, or rather, the moments leading up to it could have been good for gameplay. There were quite a few comments on this, some really good ones out there, and the general idea would have been to make the chase for the Chief something the players could participate in. Imagine exploring the Guardian's chambers, then seeing Blue Team and chasing after them. It would have been a wonderful way to really take advantage of Halo 5's movement mechanics. I still think that any player-involved fight with the Chief would have been a bad idea, but it's nice that there are some fans with some really great ideas for how to have improved these moments. Hopefully, 343 will take notice. And hell, imagine if players had been able to find their way out of the chamber, rather than watching it in a cutscene. It could have been Halo 5's very own pseudo-Warthog run, except on foot. Moving on, the stuff I'm really excited to talk about, let's discuss some of Halo 5's deeper connections to Halo's past, and how they could reflect on what we may see in the future. I've already talked at length about my theory on Cortana's true motivations in Halo 5, wanting to protect the Chief and all, but there's a bit more to it than that. If you weren't aware, in one version of Halo CE, upon returning to the control room, the Chief would have found Cortana gone mad with power and wanting to take over the universe. Sound familiar? Further, Cortana's behavior is highly reminiscent of something seen back in 1999, when a Marathon fansite received a string of mysterious emails from an entity calling itself Cortana. To quote the very first and probably most relevant of the letters, I have walked the edge of the abyss. I have governed the unwilling. I have witnessed countless empires break before me. I have seen the most courageous soldiers fall away in fear. I was there with the angel at the tomb. I have seen your future and I have learned. There will be no more sadness, no more anger, no more envy. I have won. Oh, and your poet Elliot had it all wrong. This is the way the world ends. A friend of a friend. Sound familiar? Besides containing a number of lines that were spouted by Cortana slash the Gravemind in Halo 3, it sounds quite a bit like the Cortana we encounter in Halo 5, to me at least. Governing the unwilling, seeing empires break, the bit about no more sadness, anger, or envy is a direct reference to the three stages of rampancy. Now obviously I'm not saying that Halo 5 was planned from day one, no. The Cortana letters were written back in 1999 when Halo was still in very early development, still slated for release on Apple computers in fact. However, I think it's no secret at this point that 343 loves recycling old material. For example, in Halo 4, we met the Didact, a living forerunner, an event that was originally planned to happen in Halo 3. Several cut creatures from Halo games appeared on the Ark in Halo Hunters in the Dark. Now, to be clear, I'm not bringing this up in defense for Halo 5's shortcomings or their handling of Cortana as being the big bad of the game, but the parallels are interesting, if nothing else. Another interesting parallel is between Cortana and Mendicant Bias. Both were heralded as pinnacles of AI development in their time. Hell, both were created with a similar purpose to stop a seemingly unstoppable enemy. And of course, both were corrupted and turned against their creators for what is, in their minds, the greater good. And going even further, both were corrupted by something precursor in origin, the Gravemind slash Flood in the case of Mendicant, and the Domain in the case of Cortana. Even more interesting though is that both characters seem to have a foil of sorts, an opposing AI that remains loyal to its creators. Mendicant bias is opposed by offensive bias, and Cortana, seemingly, by Roland. There was actually something of a deleted scene in an episode of The Sprint that seemed to strengthen that parallel. In it, Cortana is on a halo ring and eventually finds Roland on a Forerunner holopad. Now, nothing directly states that these two were at odds with each other in this scene, but the way Cortana imposes over Roland, to me, suggests just that. I could go on about these parallels, but I think you get the general idea. The parallels between Cortana and MB potentially hint at what may come, which brings me to our next topic, ideas for Halo 6, or whatever game comes next. Now, the most obvious direction we're headed in is a fight against the created and any sort of army they piece together to support the Promethean forces. At worst, we'd be looking at a human Sangheili alliance versus Promethean and other Covenant races, but we could always hope for more. One potential surprise 343 could throw our way is jackals fighting with humans. They are, after all, mercs. Their loyalty is always bought and paid for. 
Now sure, Cortana could potentially offer far more riches than humanity or the Sunghili could, but post-war, the Kikyar lifestyle would be at risk. So why not ally with the species that are looking to restore the disorderly galaxy that the Kigyar thrive in? Another potential idea is the notion of Cortana being controlled or corrupted by some outside influence. I know I referred to her as corrupted moments ago, but I was merely using that to convey the change in her allegiance. As Halo 5 is presented, there's no stated source of corruption, merely speculation. For my part, there are two major sources I'd love to see. First is the Didact, and considering Cortana quoting the man directly, I don't think it's all that crazy. Hell, I was actually pretty disappointed during my first playthrough to discover that the Didact wasn't controlling Cortana. I thought, throughout the whole experience, that that was going to be the big twist. But nope. Still, the library edition of Halo Escalation revealed, in Brian Reed's own words, that the Didact will return. I know it was stated that he'd be a recurring presence throughout the Reclaimer saga even before Halo 4, but I also know some fans are pretty disappointed and worried when he didn't appear in Halo 5. Well, rest at ease, my friends, he's not dead yet. Shit, I just jinxed it, didn't I? On the subject of the Didact, though, if he's not controlling Cortana or the Warden Eternal somehow, I would love to see his reaction to Cortana beginning the Reclamation and stealing his Prometheans. We've heard legends of the wrath of a true Promethean, and it could potentially be awesome to see realized in a game. Anyway, another potential source of Cortana's corruption could be the Domain itself. The Domain is alive, though not in the way we understand life. It has a will, a consciousness, which was revealed in the final years of the Forerunner Flood War. As the Domain is still around, could it be that it is now using Cortana to enact its will? But then that begs the question of why, and what does it want? One idea is perhaps the Domain wants to prepare humanity or the galaxy for the return of the Flood. As it stood at the end of Halo 4, no one would be ready for their return. But, if the galaxy were to unite under the created, they may stand a chance. The return of the Flood has been hinted at since the second Forerunner book, Halo Primordium, and we've been getting subtle hints ever since. Even if it takes a few more games, especially considering the Reclaimer trilogy is now a saga, I remain confident that the Flood will return. Speaking of the Flood, they could serve as another potential source of corruption, perhaps even acting through the Domain, which, as far as we know right now, is one of their creations. While Cortana might be acting to unite the galaxy, she also serves as a method of promoting chaos. The Flood promised it would test humanity, see if they were truly worthy of inheriting the mantle. Perhaps throwing the galaxy into chaos, turning our AI against us, is part of that test. That brings me to something else I'd like to see in Halo 6. A hint at the Flood's return. As controversial as the created storyline is, I think 343 should play it out. One of the biggest gripes myself and many of you had with Halo 5 is how it aborted storylines from Halo 4 and Spartan Ops without satisfying resolution. Whatever comes next, be it Cortana's downfall, the reveal she's been controlled by an outside force, or whatever, I want to see the created story come to a proper conclusion, hopefully a satisfying one that naturally flows into the return of the Flood. And dear God, whatever happens, please don't let the Chief save Cortana. This is honestly my biggest fear, especially in light of how poorly received Cortana was in Halo 5. I truly worry that the Chief will try and succeed at saving Cortana. As it stands, I can at least rationalize that the current Cortana isn't really our Cortana. That Cortana died at the end of Halo 4. However, if the Chief were to save her, if she became good again, that truly would, for me at least, invalidate her sacrifice in Halo 4. That would truly bring her back. The final thing I really want to see going forward is the return of the Assembly. If you don't know, the Assembly is, more or less, a group of AI that's been subtly guiding and protecting humanity since at least the 24th century. It's a very basic overview and major oversimplification, but it gets the idea across. Given that their purpose has been to guide and protect humanity, I can't imagine they'd be too pleased with Cortana's actions. With many, if not most, of the galaxy's AI in rebellion, sort of, now would be the perfect time for the Assembly to reveal themselves. It would certainly make for an interesting story if handled correctly. Sadly, when the Assembly was brought up a couple years ago, the response from Catalog seemed to imply that 343 didn't really know what to do with them. Hopefully they do now. Beyond that, I'd say don't sideline characters or teams, don't abort storylines, make sure the intel or terminals or whatever are integral to the story, and above all, let the characters speak. There are far too few character moments in Halo 5, which is especially bad when you consider how many new characters there are, especially to the casual fans. I think we all remember the opening cutscene from Shutdown. I can give you over 40,000 reasons 
why I know that sun isn't real. I know it because the emitter's Rayleigh effect is disproportionate to its suggested size. I know it because its stellar cycle is more symmetrical than that of an actual star. But for all that, I'll never actually know if it looks real. If it feels real. Before this is all over, promise me you'll figure out which one of us is the machine. It oozes with character, even for the chief, who doesn't say a word to Cortana. And of course, the scene pays off in a fairly emotional way at the end. They say that, like, soldiers and humanity are two different things. I mean, soldiers aren't machines. We're just people. I'll let you have the deck to yourself. She said that to me once. About being a machine. Moments like these are absent from Halo 5 by and large, and when they are present, like when Buck and Locke talk prior to the mission to Meridian, they never really go anywhere. Every other Spartan, every soldier, when they hear about this, they're gonna hate us. You know that, right? Never does that line pay off, and for all the great dialogue you hear throughout Halo 5, it's largely lost to most players who aren't going to wait around to hear everything a character has to say. So, those are my thoughts on Halo 6 and what could be done to improve Halo's story. Now, let's reevaluate my rating. We'll start by listing some of the positives. As I've noted, I love Osiris. I felt that they were solid characters that did what they were created to do. The intel is an absolute blast to find and listen to. I love seeing Blue Team together. The gameplay and levels are an absolute blast, especially the Sanghelios and other later levels. And of course, Exuberant Witness. Nothing more need be said. Now, the negatives. For as much as I loved Blue Team, their presence needed to be explained and overall, they either needed more levels or fewer. At the very least, Arjun Moon should have been cut, and perhaps even replaced. Imagine if we never encountered Blue Team until Meridian. How much more compelling would the hunt have been? The intel for all my praise was barely relevant to the story, which is especially bad considering how much backstory one needs to know for this game. Too much information is left up to the player to figure out. Why are there suddenly more Spartan 2s? What happened to the Janus Keen Absolute Record? Who the fuck is the Warden Eternal? Many of these have answers in the EU, I know, but it's important to address them in the game, through intel if nothing else. So, after all this, what's my final verdict on Halo 5? If I'm honest, I really can't go lower than a 7 out of 10. About tied with Halo 4. Any lower and I feel I would ignore what I liked about the game, but any higher would give too much credit to the shortcomings. I know not everyone will agree, but, well, agree to disagree? Anyway, I hope this experience has been as fun for you as it has been for me. Actually, I hope it was more fun for you than it was for me, because for me, this was actually kind of hell at a few points, but those were all production issues. Interacting with everyone in the comments and whatnot, that's always a blast. And so, we come to an end. I'm happy to say that I have a few new videos on the horizon that I think a lot of you will enjoy, including a new video series that people have been asking for for years, practically since day one. Until that time... This has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.